Hello, everyone. Welcome to Spiritus Matno. And uh, we are currently studying the book Empty Life by the Spirit Joana de Angelis, uh, psychographed by the medium Divaldo Pereira Franco. And we are at the last chapter. <laughs> and the last chapter is Happy Life. Let me start sharing oh, the screen with you. So it is where she concludes uh, the series of, you know, comments and the chapters. And like, I always like to remind everyone, each chapter is a different topic. So uh, it's an individual, but of course, the whole sequence together uh, makes us understand and reflect more about ourselves, about our positions in life. And hopefully, you know, <laughs> it start, uh, we can start work or uh, working harder to, you know, remove, you know, the bad habits, old habits die hard. So, but it's time for them to, you know, for us to say goodbye to them and start developing new uh, ways of living that definitely is going to lead us to a happier life. So we will start reading the chapter and as always, uh, comments and questions are welcome, okay? A uh, happy life. Finding complete happiness is a human aspiration that is not yet possible on earth because of several factors, especially the human body. Ecclesi Ecclesiastes asserts that happiness is not of this world, and later Jesus stated, my kingdom is not of this world. On an historic note, hundreds of years before Christ, Croesus, king of Lydia, at the height of glory, power, and fortune, asked the philosopher Solon at a banquet held in Solon's honor, who would be the happiest man he had met during his travels. After the sage stated that it was two humble young men who had given their lives for Adams, the wealthy king persisted and Solon added, one can only know that a man is happy after his death when nothing else can happen to him. Frustrated in his pride in imagining himself to be the happiest of men, Croesus, Croesus later lost the war against Cyrus, king of Persia, and after losing everything and nearly his life, he was taken by the victor to be the educator of his sons, Cambyses. It is invariably assumed that happiness entails being in possession of limitless resources, but such assets are always temporary because they change hands. So, um, in all the, you know, the chapters and the, everything that we have been studying in terms of, you know, personality traits and, uh, and, and ways of living, like we, we said before, ending with this one, it means that we want to leave our empty lives behind and wanted to start a new one that actually continues when she starts uh, the new book that we are going to be studying, A Full Life, uh, published by Liao Publisher. Uh, we, she, uh, she, I think that the way the, the benefactor Joana de Angelis was thinking is like, okay, um, in case you are wondering that just after this book, reading this book, and maybe even putting in practice what we had in the 29 chapters before the last one, you will believe yourself to be or to be entitled to full happiness. 
And then just to make things clear, I mean, this is my interpretation, okay? I'm not saying the mentor did that or was thinking about that, but my interpretation is that she's saying, she's saying to us, okay, it is a starter, okay? But remember that while we are bound to a physical body, we are subject to COVID, right? <laughs> to so many other things that are going to be a distress in our lives. And that will not allow us to be completely happy. And not to mention, you know, uh, the anxieties and all the things that we have that also takes our peace of mind, right? So she's saying it is not possible on Earth. Earth doesn't receive yet its spirits uh, in such a category that we could say those are happy spirits. So we are spirits, you know, uh, in a process of learning. And like she said here that we have in Ecclesiastes, the happiness is not of this world mm -hmm. because we still look for, you know, happiness uh, for each one of us here may mean something different. Yeah. And uh, maybe I would dare to say that from the spiritual perspective, every answer that each one of us will give will not be considered a, a thing that actually gives you to, true happiness from the spiritual, spiritual perspective, more elevated spirits, the higher spirits, they will say, I mean, this is our trinkets, this is nothing, you know, this is a just something to please yourself oh i would be happy if my my hair was a different color you know or a different texture right color we can always change but not the, the texture mm -hmm. so i mean from the perspective of spiritual life uh, the life of the spirit eternity this is nothing right so we still in this world are in in the beginning of all those processes and and she illustrates that with a story that actually uh divaldo franco tells um very well in some of his talks uh, about this king uh, a long time ago <clears throat> a true story okay Croesus, that was the king of Lydia, uh, and um, he had everything. He had everything. And when this philosopher comes to, you know, to honor his banquet or, or to become a sort of entertainment, he asked the philosopher Solon, uh, you know, who was the happiest man that he met in life, of course, hoping that he would say, it can only be you, right? <laughs> you have glory, power, fortune, family, everything. So, and he says, no, that it was, uh, you know, two young men that, off, you know, offered themselves in, in sacrifice uh, to fight for the liberation of Adams. And, uh, and then when the king insisted, he said, we... we in other words, he says, we never know the, what, what tomorrow holds. You may be happy today yes. for all the standards, but uh, when we have to make an assessment of everything that happened in your life, you will say, maybe not. Or maybe yes, because so many times, right, when we we stop to reflect about the difficult moments that we said, we, we leave it, it is not uncommon to hear people saying, wow, that was a very hard experience, very hard phase that I went through life, but I have grown so much. And uh, what I am today is thanks to that adversity, that challenge that I had, right? So I can only imagine that after the king was subdued by Cyrus, the king of Persia, and he was about to be killed, but then the king spared his life, uh, seeing how humble he he presented himself at that, at the moment, and uh, with all the knowledge he had, he used it uh, 
invited him to be the educator of his sons. And, 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 and as the story goes along, he became a very faithful uh, let's say servant of that king, that kingdom, the king and the the, the sons, and uh, maybe you know from uh, at the moment that everything happened, uh, he would say or people would say he lost all his happiness, mm. but all of a sudden he's living a different experience, very enriching one as well, very fulfilling. And after passing away, maybe if we would go to this spirit and say, what was the highlight of your life? Probably he would say it was when I was taken as a slave to be the educator of uh, the son's king, because I, 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 I. I put my vanity and everything behind and, you know, so I, I think we learn a lot from those reflections and uh, everything that Joanna DeAngelis says here. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially always as a reminder that whatever we have here on earth is always temporary. Uh, like she says, it's only change hands, right? It changed hands, and that's why, you know, we have to learn how not to be attached. It doesn't mean that we, you cannot have things, but uh, having things is one thing. Being attached to things is another. Even when we are talking about uh, the body of a loved one, I, I know it, it's very uh, difficult for us to think about it. And uh, the loss of a loved one is never easy. But when we have this perspective that life goes on and that this is not the end of our story together, uh, it makes it more bearable, right? <laughs> Any comment or question so far? <clears throat> okay. So let's read a little more. All human power is relative because restless individuals are always desperate for earthly honors and status, believing themselves to be superior to others as if illness, misfortune, and the death of their loved ones and themselves were not stalking them at every moment of their lives. One must remember that youth and physical beauty undergo continuous transformation despite enormous efforts to preserve them, which leads many deluded victims to regrettable emotional problems. Happiness starts from, for individuals when they acquire discernment about the transitory reality of existence and resolve to live according to the standards set by sovereign laws, which discipline them to hold attitudes of balance and to make social contributions. The awareness and fulfillment of one's duties is a major step toward establishment beacons of inner harmony that produce respect for life and its outward manifestations. The result of such behavior is happiness, that is, feeling that one is in harmony with life in any circumstance. Mm -hmm. So again, um, she, as she develops the, 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 the whole idea, she continues, you know, telling us that uh, regardless of how much we have, uh, even youth and beauty and all that, there is a natural process of the, the deterioration. Uh, nowadays, we have ways of, uh, you know, uh, prolonging the decay, even with uh, uh, be, becoming more aware of, you know, um, how to take care of the body more in terms of uh, our nourishment, amount of, of water we drink and exercises and all that, that will uh, really help us in terms of pre preserving our health and 
and reduce, let's say, the speed of the K, but it's it's going to happen. It is going to happen, and um, it shouldn't be taken as something bad because uh, it represents the different stages of learning that we go through life uh, when we are in 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 the um, a, a, a phase of a, a child you know uh, we are learning about the senses and all all that and then when we become more and more adult we are learning the responsibility and uh, when we come to uh, to have more age we we will um be able to assess more all everything that we 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 did and and we, inevitably inevitably we can become uh more spiritual in, in a way that uh you know i i can only imagine that uh at at, at this the time of our lives when we get to 50 over right 60 over yeah. um, we will be thinking well what is next right is there anything for me to expect or not so it it, it comes uh, the maturity of the spirit even if we do not embrace any any kind of religion or philosophy, those are questions that will come to our mind. I mean, we may we may try to bury them uh, or pretend that they are not there, but I can only imagine they are there, right? Even if you're thinking, oh, I have to take advantage of life because I'm going to die soon. Even when you say that, uh, and it, it seems that you are demonstrating that you don't care. It means that you care because uh, you are stating that you know that this is not forever. And when you do that, your your brain, your spirit will be asking, yeah. right? <laughs> your subconscious, it will be there. What is next? And so this is a phase uh, where we can you know, uh, become even kinder in a way that things that used it to bother us so much when we were young, now you say, yeah. is this really worth? Or like in relationships, right? I mean, is there any reason because of a fight that we had that meant not for a let's say sisters for a boyfriend and uh, that that was like 20 something years ago 30 years ago and you've been estranged it seems then now you're married uh, she's married uh, everyone has kids but uh, it, it's when we start thinking about uh, even reconciliation reconciliation with uh, ourselves with others and uh, with our uh, mortality considering the physical body. Any comments or no? I think that uh, as humans and human who are here on this planet Earth, I think through learning, a learning process, I look at it, so many years have gone by. I have, I'm getting to the point that just like you said, you said, okay, wait a minute. Uh, life now is short. Uh, how much could I go back and and fix all the crazy, crazy mistakes that I've done? Uh, but we have the time. Even if we have one day, I think it's a lot. There's always time to to give back and understand who we are. Uh, it, it is like it, it says here, as you explained, it, it class D has, has happiness is not yet possible. Jesus comes and says, Our kingdom is not, my kingdom is not of this world. It's so explicit in explaining the, in the importance of why we're here and how we should live our lives to understand that it, there is possibility of 
getting to a point of at least leaving in a better way, in a better state of understanding who we are, what should we be doing, how do we treat others, um, and, and, and work at it as much as you can, and be uh, content with what you have, and hope to God that, you know, you do much better than before. You know, if not, then, you know, we have to go back and say, okay, there's more work to be done. Uh, but take advantage of every moment in life. I don't care if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. You know, work as much as you can in your days, whether you're young, middle-aged, or old, that there is always time to uh, reflect and do the best that you can you know, and, and, and love, like God has said, love each other and understand why we're here. Uh, we're not here just because we were put here. It, God intended good things for us and we have to work at it and, and believe in that, that everything is, is, is there for us. And it doesn't matter if we have 50 years ahead of us or we have 10 years or five or one day, do the best that we can. To, to take with us the good that we've done, much more good than not so good. But uh, we have to face that happiness is not here. We, we, you know, we come here to repair, to, to do the best that we can and, um, and leave in a better state. Uh, but we have to get to that point. It, it depends what we learn and how we learn it and how we take it. And, in our everyday lives. It's not possible. It's not, it's not impossible. It is possible to learn and to take with us as best that we can the good of all of life has given us. And yet we see around us there's so much pain and suffering. And yet we can do as much as we can to uh, turn this life at least around your life to better yourself and help those around you, loved ones. There is, we, we can't find the happiness here. It's, it's not here. But uh, we can do the best we can to uh, give thanks to our Father that he knows what we need and work at it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's so true. I. I was thinking what while you were saying <clears throat> um, how how right you are in terms of saying it, I mean now that we are becoming older of course this uh, contemplation of uh, uh, you know being mortals from the the the, the body perspective uh, comes more often but I remember when. Uh, my mom was, was very ill and um, uh, of course we were all expecting that she would die soon. A person came to us and said, uh, you know, enjoy each and every day. And if you pay attention uh, mm -hmm. during those months that your, your mom's still going to have, you will see how many people are going to be dying that you know before her. <laughs> that are younger than her and not even with a illness. So it, oh. it, it is not related to age, right? Uh, uh, of, but of course, you know, when we reach a certain age, uh, uh, we, we are expecting and contemplating this more and, uh, and it's an opportunity to become yeah. wiser. Yeah. But the, the, the truth is... Uh, we should be like she's saying here, you know, death uh, can reach us at every moment of our lives. Mm -hmm. So it's not that uh, like those things that we postpone. I'll, I'll deal with that when I'm in, in my seventies, you know, <laughs> Maybe. <I got> it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or so yeah. many things that we postpone in life uh, say, oh, when I am a better phase or a better situation, I'll do this or that. Or like, you know, I'm going to retire and travel and then I'm going to dedicate more to my children and my family. 
Really? Do you know that for sure? We don't have, we don't, we don't know that. Uh, there is this author uh, that I like so much. Uh, his name is Leo Buscadia. He was a professor at UCLA. And um, I think it was in the 80s, I don't know, that he developed there uh, a subject that was related to love. And uh, and so uh, one of the things that he's, he said in, in his book is uh, in one of his books is that we should live like always thinking that uh, that death is at arm's length, just just that and that we should <clears throat> having this not in a sense that we should be depressed or or you know or crazy yeah. but really to value each day each relationship uh, and and i remember one example that he gave that was you know at the time really it stayed with me about a woman that she wanted so much to buy a red dress that she liked it and the husband, of course, didn't want her to spend all this money and this and that. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden she died. And he goes there, buy the dresses and buries her in that dress. But uh, the question of the professor is, what's the point mm -hmm. of you doing that? So, so be generous in, in telling others how much you appreciate them and how much you love them how much uh, you know they make a difference in your lives and because we may not have tomorrow to say that mm -hmm. and uh and this is always so good with me just this morning i was listening to a talk and uh he was talking about uh you know the acts of goodness and and, and charity and again, emphasizing that so many times we go in, and involve ourselves in, in charity uh, because we, we think that we are serving others, right? Uh, helping others. But in fact, we are helping ourselves and the liberation of oxytocin that we have in the brain. And even saying like, you know, uh, in terms of how we... we we become somehow addict to those uh, practice because when we go and we do that, we feel good and we want it to feel good again, right? So I, I, I think that this is uh, what she's talking about here. It's not, uh, you know, saying don't live your life, ignore everything, uh, you know, uh, be, become a person completely detached of, of everything but just you know be conscious about it yeah. right be conscious about it think about it think how you know uh, or, or like Solon said here we can only say that a man is happy after his death and what's your legacy yeah. right if there is no legacy even if it's just in your small group and of family okay you can you, you don't need to be famous old worldwide but in that nucleus of family people will always remind you as being someone that went the extra mile <laughs> you know in terms of being joyful and helpful and all of those things right okay just, uh, yeah, sorry. go ahead. Uh, I'm, I remember something that when you're talking about this story about the, this woman, when I was younger, my dream, it was have a bathtub. I I live it in a poor place in Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. I'm poor, but uh, simple. My, my family was simple. We don't have uh, a a house, big house. So I never had a, a bathtub and it like my dream. So I always went to the malls and I saw the bathtubs. I, I started imagining, wow, imagining in my, my bathroom, no, has a bathtub. It will be amazing. It's a dream. And <laughs> well, the time, but 
fast passing. And when uh, I married, I went to, uh, uh, 10 years ago, I went to live in Argentina and I lived in an apartment like here, no? I live in a, in a place that has a bathtub. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's not too much that I, that I dream it, you know? It's not a, wow, I have a bathtub. No, <laughs> it's not amazing that I, I, I dream it, you know? <laughs> I, I'm trying to say that, this, the things doesn't fulfill you because yes. it's not um it's just material things but the people and we are younger we think that having things uh which transform you in a, a happy person and no no yes. and another day i i'm, I'm listening to oprah and it just super famous guy arthur Rook, this guy that uh, talk about ego, he uh, is uh, her. His book is a bestseller, and she asked, uh, "And what do you feel?" Uh, and he said, "Nothing." It's like, no. So this depends. The uh, fulfill is so difficult. Uh, I think when you do charity, you feel best than uh, having things, having titles. You know, being famous, power. So, uh, just a reflection that I'm I'm doing here. <laughs> well, what is coming into my mind now that you said that, Marcelle, is that perhaps we like more the quest than actually, you know, what it's very much like children, right? They want a toy, they want a toy, they want a toy. You buy them the toy, and immediately their attention turns to a different toy. Uh, they, they there is another object of their dreams, right? It's more about the quest. When am I going to conquer that, to have that? So, you know, the bathtub. Now that you have the bathtub, okay, it's okay, it's great, but uh, I mean... I never use... I never use... <laughs> it, it shouldn't be, you know, uh, okay. And, and in terms of charity, there is not a quest involved it. You know, that then once you fulfill, you're going to feel, you, you're going to change the object of your interest because you go there thinking that you are going to be helping others, fulfilling their quest. <laughs> and, and, and maybe in this whole psychological frame, of one becoming a quest, I have to have it. I I want to have uh, only if I have that, am I going to feel happy? And this or that. And uh, versus, I'm going there to make someone else happy. And so I go with with no expectation, just to do something good. And all of a sudden, I I get so much, but it was there was no expectation. And, and, and this is normally what happens. People get so much better when, and overall, when they engage in, in good actions. And, and I mean, again, when we are talking about that, uh, um, do whatever you can. It, it doesn't mean you can, you should, you, you have to be directly involved in major works of charity, but I mean, there is always something you can do. And um like, you know, when you are walking down the street and all of a sudden people look at you, I, I do that. When people look at me when I'm walking down the street, I smile. Right. I don't say anything, uh, but I smile to them. Like, you know, I acknowledge that you look at me and my answer to you is to, you know, to offer you something. And uh, I, I, I feel, I feel their reactions and the, uh, Many times, you know, surprise, but at the same time, the surprise that comes from uh, an unexpected gesture that is a good gesture, right? So, uh, yeah, and I think uh, those are little things that we can definitely do. And uh, this is what she says here, you know, uh, for us to become aware of how we can really fulfill uh, ourselves and uh, 
and, and, and going in this direction. Again, we live in a material world. We have, uh, you know, we are surrounded by material things. But, it, but uh, it doesn't mean that it, or any of that can prevent us to see ourselves uh, as a spiritual beings. And uh, like I say, you know, I think we, we, we nowadays we live in a proportion of 90% material, perhaps 10% spiritual. Yeah. Some are maybe 80%, 20 I think overall in our, our average, right? I mean, it's not balanced, <laughs> right? Balance is 50-50. So our aim should be 50-50. Okay, I have my commitments. I have my things. I, 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 you know, but I also have that that is as important as, uh, or, you know, it will come on day that we'll say it's more important. We will reverse that we will be a Francis of Assisi, right? We will be 90% spirit and 10% worrying about even eating, right? But now, for now, if we could try 80, 20, 70, 30, I think it's absolutely amazing, all right? Uh, I think it's it, it's hard for us to measure, but I, I think... Uh, we, we have an idea, right? <laughs> we have an idea. But uh, uh, don't go as far as thinking that you are at 70 per 70, 30. I think if we are at 70, 30, oh, my God, <laughs> we, we are great already. Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay, let's read a little more. Um, it is strongly believed that happiness is the absence of any type of concern especially with regard to existential problems a mistaken idea for that to be the case one would have to live separate from everything and everyone since thoughts and events alters one's emotions very easily that we produce joy and well-being in one moment becomes a concern and a cause for uneasiness in another. Even regarding affectivity, there is an immense variety of occurrences that make it a blessed achievement or a troubling ordeal. A great effort must be made to understand well the meaning of existence and the sovereign demands to increase stability at all times. Not infrequently, worries and misfortunes banish happiness. These occurrences are part of the process of finding plenitude. So, um, uh, you know, it just says happiness is not the absence of any type of concern. Um I remember once a person that used to come to, to, to our center, then she moved to another country. And, um, and one day she came and she said that she was so unhappy. And uh, what made her very unhappy and worried is that she had no reason at all to be unhappy. Mm -hmm. uh, she had everything. Uh, and she did. She did have a, a, everything, but she, she she was not a she, she was not feeling happy. Uh, of yeah. course, uh, you know, uh, you always indicate people to go to you know to doctors to look for professional help uh, because it can be a, a, a depression or something else, right? But at, but at the same time, uh, this is what is, it is showing us here. It doesn't mean that because you have everything, you're not going to, you, you will say, I feel happy. And even, it, it's so uh, amazing how she says here, uh, uh, some things that produce joy and well-being in a moment can become a concern in a, at another moment. So, Soraya, that knows me well, you know, know that I love cakes, right? Okay. <laughs> and I'm missing your okay. short, strawberry okay. short, okay. short man cake. Oh, my God. 
So, oh my God, you're making me feel so bad. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so uh, a very simple example, okay? Just a simple examples. Uh, I love the cake. I'm going to eat more than I I, I should. Right. And, and of course, it's going to bring me so much joy, right? <laughs> but then that that gave me joy. <laughs> will reflect maybe stomach ache, yes. uh, gaining pounds <laughs> that it's so hard to lose after, you know. So like she says here, of course, she's talking about much more important things than cake. But uh, yeah. even in a relationship, you wish to marry, to marry, to marry, and you marry, and all of a sudden... <laughs> <laughs> it may not be that good or it is not a bed of roses right life is life and you have to deal with everything that comes with it so this is uh what she's talking about it but it, but it shouldn't prevent us to go into processes of um uh, uh uh, 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 of you know of trying of doing things but each time what is going to to happen is that i i we are going to make better choices uh like for instance i i i, I will have discipline i love the cake but i would just have one slice a big one but one slice <laughs> instead of three right <laughs> or four uh, and uh, all those things that will be life will be teaching us and and sometimes we go through ordeals that we we could have easily prevented yeah. because uh, there is much uh sometimes in ourselves of it's now or never and the now or never uh mm -hmm. makes us uh do silly things right right uh you know that i was thinking about this <laughs> slogan for vegas what happens in vegas is stay in vegas right i mean this is the the mentality that we have sometimes that you know you can go there and do whatever you want it's it, it, it's part of the package it is not uh, or or uh, you know uh, what kind of choices and and the, the the things that are going to make us truly happy and with responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. A responsible kind of behavior that will actually give us uh, a, a happiness, and and um, and, uh, and like she says here, we when we understand well the meaning of our lives uh we will become more stable in terms of you know more balanced in 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 our desires like you know the case of marcel i, I guess that after she got the bathtub she 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 she, 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 she would think okay, oh my god i i wanted so much that and <laughs> it's not that usable right i mean and, and um and so I didn't feel anything you know that I'm, I'm expecting i'm expecting i don't know joy and i know Okay, I, I, I never use my back <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but but you, you know, so this uh, we uh, we will be uh, knowing better, choosing better, you know, and uh, and all of that is going to bring uh, us more tranquility, peace of mind, and uh, and, and and you know, always teaching us. Uh, what to do next right uh and, and and in this phase that we are like she says here in the last paragraph not infrequently words and misfortunes banish happiness because it's part of the process of learning and growing it's not it, it's it's there to challenge us many things are there to challenge us not to bring us suffering you know it's uh uh you know, if I, I live uh, in an ideal place, uh, 
uh, in terms of, of weather, you know. Uh, maybe I, if I have a house, I will, I will never worry about having a roof because there is no rain, there is no uh, wind, there is no this and that. So uh, all the, the technological advancements came because of struggle because of challenges, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I have to cross this river because I can see that at the other side, uh, the lens is much more productive. You know, the grass is greener, right? But how do I cross this 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 river? And then we had to put our minds to work and, uh, you know, yeah, well, I noticed that a plank of wood and can stay on top of the water. So, you know, we go in through that. But now just the plank is not enough. I have to have something that makes it faster. So we will think about the paddle. <laughs> Maybe, you know, I cannot be no longer just be. And all those things, right? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I recently went to Panama and I went to to visit uh, a native community and uh, it was beautiful. It was in the middle of the rainforest and and you had, um, and, and so I was all excited about, you know, going to this, you know, through the river in the middle of the rainforest and getting into this native um, uh, tribe. And uh, and then when I, 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 I got into the canoe and the Native American that dressed it as an American or dressed it as a Native uh, First Nations, and then he <laughs> turns on the mod motor of the canoe. <laughs> so now canoes have mo motors, right? And I said, okay, uh, it, it was far. If it was not for the, that, we would take like, you know, I don't know, hours to reach the place. But, <laughs> but you know, this is progress. This is what makes right. our lives e easier, right? <laughs> yeah. I think I think of what uh, Marcella said. I, I'm thinking here when she was saying about the bathtub, isn't this something... Um, well, my age with hers is like, I'm way, I, I'm, I'm going to be 80 years old. I'm 79 years old. So I'm going to be 80. So when she talked about the tub, uh, when I was a teenager, we had tubs and I hated it. You know why? Because every time we took, uh, we, we took, we went into the tub, we had to clean the tub. We had to clean it and I hated it. So... Uh, as time went on, I got married, I got an apartment, and we had a shower. I thought this was the greatest thing in the world. I don't have to clean the tub every time. You know, you still clean, but it's not like you take, you know, take a tub. You go in the tub, you got to clean it. And mom was always after, there were seven girls, and we always had to keep that bathroom clean. But there were no showers until, uh, you know, we got an apartment, and there, behold God, there was a shower. I didn't have to clean this tub all the time. So you see how life changes. Experience, <laughs> no? We live experience, different experience. So uh, change everything. Change our perspective of right. something, you know? <laughs> and at the end of the day, what's the difference? As long as you have water, you clean yourself and, 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 and keep yourself healthy and all that. So, you know, it's things of life, yes, is important, but uh, most important is for us to spiritually keep ourselves elevated and do the best that we can, being good and love each other and take care of family and loved ones. That's what's important. Not so much material. You see how how wonderful this is because, you know, uh, like I, I said, I asked it at the beginning, what would be, you know, happiness to you? Mm -hmm. And you and Marcel had the opposite dream. Isn't that something? Look at that. With the opposite dream. <laughs> one longing for a bathtub and the other one saying, no, I don't want this anymore, right? I mean, it, and, and, and that's why it is um, from the spiritual perspective, 
happiness is a different thing. That's why Jesus said, uh, you know, my kingdom is not of this world. And the kingdom that he was referring to is not a place of, you know, royalty or this, but a place of perhaps we can say royalty of the soul. If we want to use this, this, this terminology where you are going to be the masters we are going to be the masters of our own selves and live in, in perfect balance, which means peace and happiness. So this is a, a, a kingdom, right, that uh, he was referring to, but that requires spiritual involvement, which we are acquiring each time more, but there is still a long way for us to go. Okay. Any more questions or comments that you'd like to make? Anything? Okay, so we will end for today.